almost everyone who opens a business wonders, well, like which kind of a business entity should I have? Should I have an LLC? Should I have a corporation? If I do have a corporation, should it be an S corp, a C corp? That's exactly what we're gonna cover in this video. And by the end of this video, it should be very clear what you should do. This video is brought to you by EpiPies Academy. Let's start with then LLC. All of these, by the way, they give you liability protection, meaning if somebody sues you, they're not suing you, they're suing the company. So you get to keep your car, your house, your finances, your family is safe. The business is the one liable. That's the protection you get. The other implication is tax implication. We'll talk about it through this video, but that's the important thing. The difference of should you do business as yourself without registering a company? If you don't register a company, people can sue you for your money directly if something goes wrong. If you register a company, you have that liability protection, meaning they're no longer suing you, they're suing the business. And by the way, also this is just for United States. If you are in a different part of the world, you might have similar legal structures in wherever you are, but in every country it's different and I cannot obviously cover every country. So I'm, I'm based in the United States and most people taking the, the this course in, are in the United States. So obviously, this is for United States. In your area, make sure you talk to a lawyer before you register any business entity. So let's get started. So the advantage of an LLC is it's one of the more modern business entities. It's something that's created more recently in the last few decades. It's easy to set up. It's very flexible. There are relatively few management issues compared to a corporation. It's good if you're not seeking outside funding. Some states impose a couple of additional requirements on them but generally they're easier to manage than corporations. So they're good for small businesses and LLC itself does not get taxed. So there's no double taxation in an LLC. The LLC, when it gets paid, it doesn't get taxed. The only time anybody gets taxed is when the LLC actually pays you salary, which is actually good. You don't want to get taxed twice. This is the good case. If you want outside funding, like investors, generally your options are the corporation, S Corp or C Corp. We're gonna talk about that shortly. Well, for now, let's continue with the LLC. So if you're a single member LLC, meaning you have no partners, you're basically taxed like a sole proprietorship. Your taxes are very easy. Obviously, we're not gonna get deep, deep into taxation because I'm not an accountant, but you basically get taxed as a sole, as a sole proprietorship, which for our purposes now, we're, we're going to understand this is the easy case. Your taxes are going to be relatively simple. If you have more than one member in your LLC, you're going to get taxed as a pass-through corporation, meaning that the company will just pay each member individually. And the only taxes that happen is when each member is taxed individually, which is the good case. One of the great benefits of an LLC is that it doesn't have the double taxation. Few United States have an extra requirement, which is publishing articles on, over incorporation, meaning like you have to publish that you've opened your company in a newspaper. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. Sometimes it costs a couple of hundred dollars, like New York State has this requirement. A couple of other states have this requirement. It's completely ridiculous requirement, and it doesn't help your business at all. It's just a waste of time and money. But it's a requirement that they have, and if you don't want to do it, it's, it's a little bit of a decision because it's going to cost you extra money, and it's a waste of time. This, this is the time that basically you're dealing with logistics of your company, meaning you're not actually building your actual company. You're not doing anything for building the product. You're not doing anything for do, you know, growing the marketing. So this is actually a kind of a waste of time. And which companies is this good for? Well, if you're gonna kind of stay a small business, so like if you're opening a cleaning business, a real estate business, if you have a restaurant you're opening, if you have a small website that's not gonna go big, if you maybe like in e-learning, right? Like if, uh, if you're creating an online course, if you're doing affiliate marketing, all those things generally, you're gonna be an LLC, it's perfectly fine. Now, when do you start dealing with corporations? Let's start talking about S Corp. S Corp is also a pass-through tax entity, meaning it doesn't get taxed when it gets paid. The only taxes happen when the S Corp pays its shareholders. In an LLC, an owner is called a member. In an S Corp, an owner is called a shareholder. You can have in, a, in an S Corp up to 100 shareholders, meaning like it's not a company that's gonna go public, right? Because it's only 100 shareholders. 
and the shareholders can only be like United States citizens or holders of green cards or legal residents, something like that. And only individuals can hold shares, not other companies. So again, this is for mid-sized, relatively small local companies that are not going to seek investments. Or, you, you, know, you don't have dreams of becoming a Fortune 500 company. And again, it's a pass-through tax entity that's very important. Now, a C-Corp, that's if you want to be a Fortune 500 company, if you want to go public one day, if you're that type of company. Obviously, everybody wants and dreams that, but some companies have that idea as a as built in like if you're the next airbnb if you're the next dropbox if you're the next uber like you have that great potential you you are going to seek investors and so that's an ideal type of situation c corp and by the way you can open as an llc or an s corp and then switch it to a c corp later it's just an, an annoyance but it's possible to do also, a C-Corp can issue different classes of stock. This is where you hear class A stock, class B stock, preferred stock, and you can have an unlimited number of shareholders. So this is perfect for going public. So anybody can buy your stock. It does have double taxation. So if you're a small company and you just want to save your money, you want to avoid C-Corp because whenever the company gets paid, it gets taxed. And when it pays out the owners, the shareholders, it gets taxed. So you lose money. And like I mentioned, there's multiple classes of stock that different shareholders can own and foreign ownership is allowed. So those are the difference between an LLC, a C Corp and an S Corp. Now, how do you actually register this business? Well, don't run to register it now. You still should talk to a legal professional, maybe more than one. You should get multiple opinions before you decide. After you decide, you can go to your Secretary of State website for your state. Every state has a different Secretary of State website. All you have to do is just Google for Secretary of State in whatever state you're in, and you file a certificate of incorporation there on the site. And boom, you are going to be registered. There's going to be a fee. Every state differs in what fee it is. It might be $100. It might be something else. Like I mentioned earlier, some states have extra requirements, meaning extra fees. But generally, that's going to be the process of deciding which entity is right for you and registering. Now, there are some businesses that are not LLC, not S Corp or C Corp, like a law firm. That's a whole different business entity. It's like an LLP. So there are some industries that just have specifics attached to them. That's why you need to get multiple opinions for multiple professionals and just get an understanding of like, okay, this video was a general overview, but now you need to look into spe the specifics of your situation. Maybe there are some unique things. Maybe you have extra licenses and extra requirements. Those are still things that you have to research further before deciding how to incorporate. And after doing some research, you might find that for your unique situation, there might be some very common entity that is usually used but it's up to you to research your unique situation. This video is just a general overview of what people generally do because it's impossible to cover all cases in a video like this.